aim of the experiment to show that crystals of copper sulfate contain water of crystallization. Theory. Copper sulfate usually exists in its hydrated form as a deep blue crystalline solid. A molecule of copper sulfate contains five molecules of water. The formula is thus represented as CuSO4 5H2O. These water molecules are also known as water of crystallization because they refer to the water molecules that are chemically bound within the crystal structure of a compound, specifically during the process of crystallization from a solution. These water molecules are an integral part of the crystal's formation and are not merely adsorbed on the surface or present as free moisture. Hydrated copper sulfate crystals, when heated at high temperatures, can lose its water of crystallization in a process called dehydration. This process is also accompanied by a change in the color, usually from deep blue to a almost colorless solid. The equation for the dehydration of hydrated copper sulfate can be represented as follows. Copper sulfate that had already lost all of its water of crystallization is white in color and is commonly known as anhydrous copper sulfate. If anhydrous copper sulfate is allowed to cool in air, it regains all of its water of crystallization and becomes blue again. This transformation can be represented as shown here. Materials required A test tube Test tube holder Spirit lamp or Bunsen burner Spatula Copper sulfate pentahydrate crystals Procedure Take half a spatula full of copper sulfate pentahydrate crystals in a test tube. Holding the tube using a test tube holder, begin heating the salt under the flame of a burner for 5 to 10 minutes. Record your observations. Now, stop heating the tube and quickly transfer its contents into a watch glass or petri dish. Keep the watch glass in open air for some time and allow the salt to cool. Record your observations. Now. Add water dropwise to the residue in the watch glass. Record your observations. Observations On heating, the blue color of copper sulfate crystals first changes into bluish white, which then eventually turns white and continued heating. When the white salt is allowed to cool in the watch glass, the color of the anhydrous copper sulfate again turns sky blue. If water is added to it, the salt finally turns back to the original deep blue coloration of hydrated copper sulfate. Results and Discussion Hydrated copper sulfate, when subjected to high temperatures, begin losing all of its water of crystallization. This water of crystallization is what shapes the crystalline structure of copper sulfate. Specifically, hydrated copper sulfate in its pentahydrate form typically has a triclinic structure. When hydrated copper sulfate completely gets dehydrated, it becomes anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white in color. Anhydrous copper sulfate has an orthorhombic structure. This physical transformation is however a reversible process. When anhydrous copper sulfate is exposed to open air, it begins absorbing water molecules from air and regains its hydrated form to some extent. At this point, the anhydrous copper sulfate turns light blue to sky blue in color. If excess water is added to it, the semi-hydrated copper sulfate eventually turns back to its original deep blue color as it regains all of its water of crystallization. This reverse process of regaining its water of crystallization is evident from a change in color from white 
to sky blue, and then finally to deep blue. This experiment thus proves that hydrated copper sulfate contains water of crystallization.